It's an unidentified flying object hoovering over Stephenville. It's a half a mile wide and about a mile long. It was very intense, bright light. They were dancing around and they were flickering. So fast when it took off. We're not all a bunch of idiots, you know. There's so many people that saw it. We're back. Angelina Joyner remains with us. She's in Stephenville and here in Los Angeles. Dr. Seth Shostak joining us from Denver, Colorado is Glenn Schultz, former U.S. Army radar system specialist. He used the Freedom of Information Act, by the way, to get the radar data relating to the skies over Stephenville and what might have been sighted. And in Austin is Robert Powell, director of research for the Mutual UFO Network. He also obtained radar data relating to Stevensville UFO sightings. MUFON, by the way, his organization is sponsoring the 39th annual International UFO Symposium later this month in San Jose. All right, Glenn Schultz, what do we know? Larry, what we know is that we got an excellent set of data from the FAA Fort Worth Air Route Traffic Control Centers, and we're very thankful to uh, Mark, Connie, and Greg down there for doing a very, very good job. Uh, Gary, I think it is. And the data um, tells us? Well... The first thing we found, the question is, what did we find when we looked at this data? The first thing we found was we had 25 million words, 2.5 million lines, 10 words per line. We had the King James Version of the Stephenville Radar Book. I want to repeat that. We had the King James Version of the Stephenville Radar Book. And I'm not saying that facetiously or in jest. We had, uh, in my estimation, after I looked at the quality of this data, which I spent the first two weeks doing, we had an unabridged, unedited, unadulterated set of excellent data, not touched by human hands, but the result and of... And what, all right, Glenn, what do we know? Well, uh, in uh, a brief time we have, Larry, all I can do is refer you to what I hope we can do is show you chart one, because that tells you volumes just with one chart more than I could do in 10,000 words. Can you... All right, you do we have the chart? There? I assume, do we have it? Okay. Okay, there it is. Okay. Uh, do you see the uh, complexity of that plot? Do you see the number of specs on that plot? Each one of, uh -huh. those, each one of those specs is a radar return. You're looking, at probably, you're looking at probably 100,000 radar returns, and these are skin paint returns. These are not returns from beacons. These are unknown objects in the air that are returning a skin paint target to a, an antenna at, in Texas. Uh, furthermore, you're looking wow. at the, you're looking at two and a half hours worth of time there, so you're seeing a, a global view of what we found in this data from one antenna, and we had data from five antennas, so we were able to check book, chapter, and verse here against each other. Uh, what does it tell you, Robert Powell? Um, by that question, Larry, do you mean what what does it tell me in terms of just the raw amount of data? Do you think it reaffirms uh, your feeling about UFOs? Well, the data itself doesn't, but once we interpret the data and analyze it, it reaffirms that a lot of what the witnesses saw is confirmed by this data. Okay. Could, though, could others look at the data and refute that? Well, I would say that Glenn and I have put in several hundred hours, so it would take someone a long time to try to refute that, and I don't believe that they would be able to. Dr. Shostak, what's your read on the read? Well, listen, there's a lot of data. It's a, great, it's a great job. They finally looked at something very carefully. But the facts are there are known to have been aircraft in the area. So, of course, you're going to get radar reflections from aircraft. You know, the question you have to ask Glenn is uh, what in the radar evidence convinces him that this is non-terrestrial craft? What's in those radar reflections that tells you this isn't aircraft from Earth? Hundreds of primary skin paint returns which don't fit to any known pattern that we can assign it to. So are you absolutely convinced? Well, I'm convinced that there are objects in the air that night that were not traveling with beacons on, that the military is not claiming, the FAA is not explaining what they are, and they certainly fit the scenario of what the witnesses saw. I don't say so you something can... something secret, but it's not... But, but why do you think it's extraterrestrial is really what I'm asking you. I didn't say it was extraterrestrial. You're putting words in my mouth. I'm just telling you what the radar found, and the radar found hundreds of thousands of skin paint returns, and a cluster of them right near Stephenville are headed off toward Crawford. I don't see how you can I deny you. that. Do you think it was extraterrestrial? You asking me, Larry? Yeah. Um, what do you think? I, I don't want to speculate yet because uh, we're still in the middle of this. This, this is the first... Uh, 
day that this data has been released. Robert and I have been working on it for four months, and I don't want to speculate yet, but I'll say this. There's something there that needs to be, uh, questions need to be answered by the Air Force and the FAA as to what was in the sky that night that was traveling without a beacon. Angela, what do you think? I was most impressed with the radar um, actually fitting to eight of the witnesses in separate locations. You know, in Phoenix, you had hundreds of people that saw something, so that made it maybe easier for somebody to come out and say, well, it was flares. But in this case, you have eight people that are in separate locations uh, at, separate, at different times that this unknown object matches up to their report. So I don't think um, we're going to come up with one blanket uh, reason uh, for or thing as to what they saw. That, that part was most impressive to me.